Hello and welcome to Data Research Labs. For this tutorial, we're going to discuss text validation tests in Oracle. Best practice is to load all data types as text, and that way you can land the data without any issues. Then you start parsing out the text fields into the various data types that you want. So why is that relevant here? Because it means that text value data validation tests are a very useful tool in your tool belt. There are 24 examples in this rule set, and we're going to start with not null right now. In the interest of time, I'm going to go through all of the different text value data validations here in GitHub, just a quick cursory overview. Then I'll switch to SQL Developer and we'll walk through them one by one there. So to get started, test 21, not null. You're checking for any, you're making sure that uh, all the text fields are not null. The T22 not null string is slightly different. This is especially true for uh, databases that are not Oracle because there's a difference between a quote, quote, null string and a true null. In Oracle, they're the same thing. The no leading or trailing spaces, that's a handy one to do. Check and make sure that the data doesn't have any of those. Sure, you could trim it, but sometimes you want to check and see if it's got the leading or trailing space. Uh, in the value list, not in a value list, you know, the typical in, not in commands in a SQL where clause. Multi-field compare, it's where you're using a bunch of different text fields to compare different things. Text length, that's a handy one. If you want to make sure a phone number's nine characters or etc. You just take the length of the string and look at that. Uppercase and lowercase, making sure that that has the proper case. Alpha and numeric characters, making sure it has what you expect. No quotes. No, there's a whole series of uh, no bad characters. So making sure there's no quote characters, no carriage turn line feed, no tab, no non-breaking space, no m dash. But note that I'm going to show you how to return, if there is a failure, return the position within the string that the failure occurred. So it's a real handy validation technique we're going to go through. Uh, only allowed characters in a list, so you have a list in square brackets of characters and whatever's in there is the only thing that's allowed. If it's not, you get a rejection. Typical like wildcard. Is uh, these ones are for when the text, uh, like a numeric value comes in as text, you want to land it as a text field data type, but before you convert it to numeric and have it fail, maybe you want to check and make sure with an is numeric type of check using SQL commands. Same thing with is date. If the format is any of these flavors, maybe you want to land it as text because anything goes, and then run it through one of these checks and make sure it's a valid format before you actually do the conversion. So after running through this overview, let's go over to SQL Developer and start running and testing these. Here we are in SQL Developer, and we're in the little snippet script. There's also a basic automated script and an advanced automated script. You can access all of those at the URL that's down in the comment section of this video. Just look at that, click there, and, and go grab the script, and you can run them yourself. And there's also the scripts to create the demo database. But let's get, go ahead and get started on test 21, the first of the rule set number six text values. And it's a simple verify no nulls at the, the country name field in the table countries. And if I run the inner query, it's basically going to say, go to the table. If country name is null, return a fail, otherwise pass. We execute it, and we're going to get all passes, I suspect. Yeah, we do. And then when we roll that up in the outer wrapper, it's going to be one pass because the auto wrapper says, what's the count of rows returned where the status is not passed? Zero. Well, if it's zero, it's going to be a pass. And you'll see that pattern all throughout the rest of the test. Test 22, verify no null strings. Well, Oracle doesn't have a null string. Let me hit the backspace. That is a null string in SQL Server and other languages. Oracle doesn't have it, so for purposes of this, we'll just act like someone used a null surrogate value of a space. And so we'll check for that. So in here, country name, is it a space anywhere? No, it's not. They're all passes. So this is the no leading trail uh, or trailing spaces. And so what we're going to do, once again, the demo HR country table. We're going to look at the country name and see if there's any like space wildcard or wildcard space. So leading space, trailing space. That's how you do it. That's the magic right there with the like operator. Another trick we're doing is if there is leading space, then tag it, the row with rejection one, verify no leading spaces, blah, 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 and then give it the actual name. And same with the trailing space. And we can run the enter just so that you can see it. They're all passes, and we run the outer, and it's just going to be a single pass. I'm just going to move right along. I want to get to the fancier stuff. Uh, verify that a value is in the value list. So if we are looking at the employees table, 
and we're looking at the job ID field. And the job ID should be in all of these values I have highlighted. Then we want to know if it's not in the list that it should be. And if it's not in, we give it a fail. Otherwise, we give it a pass. So if we run all of these, oops, I got to highlight one more. If we run all those, we get all passes. Run the whole thing, it's going to get a single pass. Now we're going to move to test 25, not in value list. It's basically the same thing. If the job ID should never be these values, then we want to return an error if it is one of those values. So that's what we're doing. It's the double negative throws you, but that's the way you have to think about it. So if, if it's verify it's not in a value list, then return an error if it is in the value list. So that's what's going on there. Moving along, test number 26, verify multi-field compare. So in this case, we want to take and say, is the email field equal to the first letter of the first name plus the full last name in the table employees? So that's our business rule involving three text fields, email, first name, character out of there, and the last name. And down here, there's the table, demo HR, employees. The value we're checking, email, that's actual. The expected value should be the first character of the first name and the upper of that. And then we want to concatenate the last name on and we want to take the substring of that whole concatenated value, first character and full last name. We only want the first eight characters of that combined amount because that's what the data is in this particular demo data set. Also, here, if I run this, you'll see that there's some fails. And the reason there's some fails is just because the data didn't follow the business rule. <laughs> D. Raphael, here's what we'd expect, but it was spells wrong in the test, test data set that got off the internet for Oracle. J. Marlowe, Jam Marlowe. Anyway, so I just thought, you know what, just I'm not going to fix them. I'm just going to exclude them. And it's a good example of what you can do. Let's say you have a test case that's running day after day, and all of a sudden it starts failing. And there's a known issue that these emails are bad, and nobody's ever going to fix it. Well, there you go. That's one of the best practices we'll talk about later in a future video. You just exclude the ones that you have looked at, made a conscious decision, you ignore them. So if we run this, we would get all passes, move along. Nothing new really for most people, but as we work our way down, we're going to get to some more exciting stuff. Text length. In this case, we want to know where our phone number is not 12 or 18 characters. Local US is 12 characters, international is 18, according to this data set. So that's what we're doing. We're saying go to the employees table, look at the length of the phone number field, and if it's not in 12 or 18, stamp it with rejection code. And go ahead and give the actual phone number. So if I run the whole thing, we get a pass. So back that off, back this off. Since they're all 12, let's make that 112. That'll break it. Now let's go run the data set. Yay, we get a fail. So if this happened in real life and you got a fail, you'd want to troubleshoot it. Well, come over here to your script. If you're using the advanced script, it'll give you all the details of the failure, it'll give you the expected, the actual value, etc. If you're not running the advanced script, you're doing the basic script, or you're just running it this way yourself because it's simpler, you would come to the inner part of the query and just execute that. And it would give you the actual and say, oh, it, it's 12, but it was expecting 112. And you could come in and add additional things like the primary key of the uh, table so that you could track it. I'm going to do it really quickly. I'm going off script okay, quickly. So I added the employee ID, the primary key. Now when I run it and I get a rejection code, it's meaningful, it's actionable, because I know that employee ID 123 or 127 is where the failure is, and then I can go correct the data because I have a handle, the primary key, to get to it, and I have the rejection code. What's wrong with it? Moving along to test 28. This is where I want to look at upper or lower case on the last name to make sure that they're properly formatted. In Oracle, it's just, I'm going to just jump to the regular expression. It's easier to do that. I could go to upper to lower, but nah, I'm not going to think it, 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 it. We're just going to use the uh, regular expression. So here we go. We are going to go to the HR employees table and we're going to go to the job ID. And if the job ID is lower, then that's an error because the job ID should always be all uppercase. So let's run the inner. 
everything is a pass. And of course, if we run the outer, then it'll be a single pass as well. But the magic, if you go to the SQL scripts, that's gonna get this to work is the use of regular expressions. And regular expression underscore like, field name, comma, and then single quote, this right there, bracket, bracket, colon, lower, or upper. So upper and lower, that's how you do them with regular expression in Oracle. Moving along, alpha and numeric characters. There's a alpha code and a digit code that you can use to scan. So in this case, employees table, employee ID, if there's any alphas, because it's a re regular expression like, and there's no not operating in front of it. If it's alpha, then verify employee ID does not contain alpha characters, it does. And then down here, last name, if there's any digits, then reject it. Verify last name doesn't have any digits. And I'm not even gonna run this. It'll pass or fail and run just like all the rest of them. Let's move along. Oh, these are, let's see. We're gonna just kind of skip over this, we talk about it. This one, verify no quote characters exist, where the first name has no quotes. And what we're looking for is employees table, first name, does it have wildcard, a double quote wildcard? If it does, reject it and indicate that's what happened. We also wanna check for a single quote, but inside Oracle, you have to escape a single quote by entering two single quotes in a row. That's why we have two single quotes there, because it's actually saying, hey, if there's wildcard, one single quote, wildcard, then reject it. And I'm gonna move along and not run this one, but that's our first, hey, is there a bad character somewhere in the string? Our next uh, example of that is, hey, are there any bad or carriage return line feed? That's a common problem when someone uses a text editor or office or whatever, and they type in data and then copy paste it, especially like in emails, You'll see that happen. Someone hit a tab in an email or a carriage return line feed, copy paste that into database entry field, send it off, get stuck in someone's database, and then causes problems downstream on some job that wasn't expecting it. it happened to me at multiple different times throughout my career. Anyway, what we're going to do here is go to the employee table, look at the last name field or email, and this right here, CHR10. The car 10 is. That's the line feed. Yes, car 10 is line feed. Car 13, or CHR 13 in Oracle speak, is a carriage return. So what we're saying is in string, if the last name has a line feed in string and the position is greater than zero because it found one, stamp or return a rejection code, indicate that the CHR 10 exists. And then my favorite part, and the reason why we're gonna run this is you can catenate and say the, the expected is there's none. The actual is there's some or one at position and then you give it the position within the string. This right here and well, this right here. Car 10 in string, the last name. That gives you a position numeric and then you got to cast it of course as var car so that it can be concatenated to the string. It's a concatenation operator. So this is a really handy one. I don't have any examples, so that's kind of a bummer. Let's, oh, I know what we're gonna do. We're gonna run it. We're gonna see everything pass. Now check this out. We're going to cheat. We'll turn it to 65, which is an A. And then we'll run it. We should get a bunch of fails. And we do. I think 65 is an uppercase A. That's why there's only one. But there we go. And if, uh, yeah, that, that actually explains it. Uh, field last name has a line feed. It's not. I overwrote it with 65, an uppercase A, at position zero, the first position. So very handy to be able to intercept bad characters like a carriage return line feed. And moving along, you can look for tab characters, same process, use a CHR9. You can look up a non-breaking space. I use these all the time. Here, let's put one in here. Alt 0160 on the numeric keypad. And there we go, that's non-breaking space. Looks like a space, but it's not. It's a neat trick in HTML. Instead of using ampersand NBSP, use the numeric keypad in Alt 160 or 160. And you can do three or four of those in a row, and now you have blank space, white space that won't be trimmed. So people use it, and sometimes it causes a problem, especially if people are getting tricky and putting in email addresses and last names and other things. And you'll want to check for that and strip them out. So the CHR 160, very handy. M dash in Microsoft Office. Hey, maybe I'll even just bring it up and I'll show you because it's such a, it's just a nasty problem to troubleshoot. And then when you finally figure it out, you're like, oh, I don't want that to happen again. 
Here's a word, blah, 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 dash, dash, space, blah, 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 blah. Right now when I hit the space, boop, that's an M dash. Those two dashes, undo, those two dashes, zoom in, those two dashes right there, as soon as I hit space on the word, becomes an M dash. And that M dash wreaks havoc on some systems when you're dealing with just basic ANSI character sets. And so many times you'll want to strip those out because users will accidentally enter them into your system. And it's a CHR-151. That's the magic ANSI or ASCII character code you're looking for. 151, CHR-151. And follow the same pattern we've been doing. Look for an in-string, field name, that special character. If the position found in-string is greater than zero, then it's a fail and you can write the position out, etc. Moving along, DT, FNL, blah, blah, blah. I don't really use these much, but it's good to know and be aware of vertical tabs, car 11, form feeds, car 12, and next line, car 133. Actually, I've never used these, but I did some research to extend what I already had in my library of validation functions, found these, and added them. So you may or may not find them useful, but there they are if you need them. Uh, periods and dash characters, just an example. You don't have to use a CHR. You can look for in string, last name, doesn't have a period, doesn't have a dash. Maybe you don't want those in the string. Uh, bad characters. You could, and what I'm doing is saying, does the last name have any of these characters in it? If any of those characters exist in the string, then fail. This is really handy because you can look at the keyboard and specifically type in exactly what you don't want or the opposite. You can type in exactly what you do want. So up here, last name, don't have any funky characters. Down here, phone number only allow these characters. Zero through nine, all the digits, and a dot. And the little caret symbol said not, because I don't, let's see. Yes, that's a not operator, because I'm saying that uh, when the regular expression phone number is not one of those characters, then fail. And moving along, typical like wildcard. In this case, phone number on the employees table, and it, it's just pattern matching. So the first thing it checks is if the phone number doesn't have a period in it, because for our particular purposes, they weren't using dashes to separate the phone number, they were using periods. So great, make sure that the, uh, just fail right off the bat. Rejection code one, phone number has to contain at least one period. Should contain two, but we'll get to that in a minute. And if it doesn't, show the phone number and indicate that it doesn't. If it passes that simple check, move to the next check and make sure that the phone number matches the US standard, three digits, dot, three digits, dot, four digits, or that it matches the international standard. And if both of those patterns are not passed, then you get a re rejection code indicating what happened. Test case 40, our 20th text test getting down to last five now. These are where you're landing a text field, but you know you're going to change it to numeric. Or down here, you're landing a date field. You're landing it as text, and before you convert it to date, you want to check. So let's start with these numeric. Basically, what we're doing is going to the employees table, taking the zip five, which should always be numeric, and then we're going to use a regular expression like. Anyway, this regular expression works, but it could be compressed down and be improved upon. But I'm not going to do that now. Uh, and if you run it, it's going to, everything's going to be a pass. They're all five digit numeric. And if you run the outer, it's going to roll up to a single pass. Moving along to our first text date value where we want it to be year, 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 month, month, day, day. And we want to verify that all the data in there matches that spec. What table is this? Employees. And then just to give you a visual, pop it open, look at the data. And I took, there we are, some date format one, some date format two, some date format three, some date format four. So <laughs> that 50 is the column, department ID. 2004-07-18, that is some date format one. The same thing in month, day, year with slashes, same thing month, day, year with dashes, same thing with year, month, day and dashes. Same date, four different flavors, and now we're going to go and they're all text, but we want to validate that they match the required spec. And so that's what all this is doing. So employees table, some date format one. We're doing a bunch of checks. So what are we doing? It's kind of ugly. I could have done this with a regular expression. It would have been a lot more compact. 
but I wanted a universal way to do it. And this particular logic will work across all kinds of databases beyond just Oracle, because everything has a replace and a substring command. So looks ugly, but what we're doing up here at our first when check is we're replacing zeros, ones, twos, threes, blah, 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 blah. We're replacing all those single digits with nothing. <laughs> and as long as the contents of this field are nothing but digits, it'll pass the first check because if it replaced everything, quote, quote, would equal quote, quote, and we would move on. But if there's any digits remaining, an A, a B, whatever, that's gonna be greater than a quote, quote, and so it'll fail at rejection one. Rejection code two, we're looking at the length. It has to be eight characters. If it's not eight, it's nice to know. Oh, it's not eight. And then we move on. And if the first four digits aren't between the years 1753 and four nines, because sometimes people kick an expiration or an end or termination date way out to the infinite future. If it's not between those, then error out. Say the year's not between that. And then for the month, two characters, we check and say is it between one and 12. And for the date, we look between 01 and 031. Yeah, this is a low check is date check because it's not going to catch leap years. It's not going to catch months with less than 31 days, but that's okay. For these purposes, it's just a data validation check to say, hey, something's off. Something big is off. You could do trickier stuff with actual date functions to check. But anyway, this is just a universal way. Many different database platforms will handle it and you can check a year, year, month, day, day format. And you can do the same thing with month, month, day, day, year, year. And moving along, month, day, year, same thing, except we use a dash instead of a slash. And then the final text check, and this one will go actually run it and parse things out. Uh, same, same drill, but it's gonna use dashes and nothing should equal nothing if all the characters are allowed characters. And format length 10, years, months, days. If I were to run this, boom, see if it gives us a visual here. Well, it's gonna give us passes. Eh, that's fine. I'm not gonna take the time, but as I built this, the check many years ago, I walked through and you know didn't have the case. I Here, I'll just do it. You can see how to, so copy that paste it in here as X, throw in a comma. I'm not even gonna make it look pretty because I'm gonna get rid of it. Run the internal. Oh yeah, what did I do? What did I do? What did I do? Oh, we don't want a comparison. We just want the value. So get rid of all that, put an as, put an X. There we go. Run the internal again. And yeah, it's all null, but Check this out. If we were to change, say, a one to an X, that'll leave all the ones. Now, if we run it, we can see that, in fact, that's what happens. Some have one one, some have multiple ones. All the other characters are stripped out. That one had four ones. Anyway, you can feel free to play with the script and manipulate it around all you want to learn and practice with it. But that is all 24 of the text field data validation checks. To download the SQL scripts in this video, open a browser. In the URL, go to www.github.com slash data research labs, all one word. It pops up, click the SQL scripts link or filter to find it. And scroll down till you see the data validation scripts in the markdown language. Click it and scroll down. I don't have the green plum links built or the SQL server, and I don't have the videos built. They will be, it's just gonna take time. But for our purposes here, let's go to Oracle. Let's look at, sure, let's look at the uh, diff checks. Right click, open in a new tab. And in this case, all the details are collapsed. So expand it, big bunch of SQL that's gonna schema diff and tell you source to target whether the structure's changed. And you can hover over this little clipboard, click that, and voila, you've copied it. And if I were to go over and open up a notepad and paste that in, there it is, there's all the SQL properly formatted. So that is how you open up and use the SQL scripts from this video and all the rest of the videos. 
Thank you for watching, and please, if you found this video helpful, click like and subscribe. Also, check out our other videos and related playlists in the boxes to the right.